Welcome to day three then of week seven in the Stars Order 6 Online League. And today, with it being day three, we are here, there and everywhere. Eight courses today spread across numerous different countries and continents and all sorts of stuff. So let's have a little bit of a look at what we've got. We're starting off with a couple of races at Haydock with a uh, 0-100 handicap and a maiden. Then there'll be a couple of handicaps over at York. Then it'll be a quick trip to Weatherby for a five furlong race there for two-year-olds. Then it'll be a couple of races on the all-weather at Southall, followed by another one at Newcastle. All noughts and nineties to get some of the lower-rated horses a chance with a win. And then the big ones will start. We'll have five group ones, one after the other. The first one of those being the Irish Derby at the Curra. Let's take a little look at what we think might happen in that one. It's a pretty good-looking field. It's not a very big field, but there's some um, there's some good ones in there. The top-rated just about is Prosecutor for Steve Ryan, but he's only rated... A pound superior to Picasso for Paul Rhodes, who won the King Edward the Seventh at Ascot last week, and he's also only rated a pound higher than Paul Rhodes' other horse, the Coliseum, which was the Epsom Derby winner. So it'll be pretty tight between those three. Throw into the mix noise zone for Darren Thompson, whose form figures are going slightly the wrong way at one, two, three, four. We open to reverse that today. That one's to still be in there with a chance, though. Batter being alert for Molly at Surfer is going to try and turn the tables on the horses in the, in the earlier races because he's been beaten in the Derby and the King Edward VII Stakes by Coliseum and Picasso, so he's going to have to do a big turnaround today. Favourite son for Django wouldn't be without a chance on his early season form, although he's been disappointed the last three times. And then you've got a few more in there from big trainers. I've got pretty uninspiring form figures, but you look at the name of the trainer and you can't discount it, can you? Masterclass for Joshua Sutherland, Cadonia for Thunderspark and Fame Seeker for David Robertson or wouldn't be totally out of it. it would only be the, the rag maiden exposition who would be totally out of it in my opinion. So that's your duty free Irish Darwin then should be an absolute thriller. And then we follow that up with the Darley Irish Oaks, which of course is one and a half miles again for three-year-old fillies. And it's interesting to note that the fillies are rated superior to the Colts. With Treaty of Versailles for Paul Rhodes, the top one, rated 123, and Lost at Sea for Stephen Rand, rated at 118. So it would appear that the fillies appear to be better than the Colts this season, so we'll be interested to see what happens when they come up against each other in the next few weeks, probably in the King George in a couple of weeks' time. Lights and Sirens for Django is pretty well thought of as well. Jenna Lee's won twice for Thunderspark. 101 Badabing for Molly at Surfer has won twice as well. So there's plenty in there with chances. Serious Chill is taking some serious windmill tilting again with his Mossy and Mossy Elliot, who both look a little bit out of their depth, but they might as well have a go. You never know. Pick up fifth place and you might um, stick a few bob in the bank account. After that, we'll be across the sea to the other side of the world where we'll be at Randwick for the TJ Smith Stakes. It's a Group 1 for three-year-olds and upwards over six furlongs. Worth an absolute fortune, this race. Oh, a, mi a million and a half, I think it's worth. We've got joint top ratings, Diabolica for Thunderspark and Exocet Missile for Paul Rhodes. Awesome music looks the one for me, though. Rated at 115 with two wins. Craftwork for Steve Rand also looks like he's got a bit of a chance as well and one or two dark horses down the bottom and the lowest rated horse in the race is 106 so that's going to be an absolute thrill of the second group one at Randwick is the AJC Sires Produce race for two-year-olds it's um, over seven furlongs and Espiri 2 is unbeaten in two performances rated 1174 John Morgan you'd expect that one to keep up the good work continue to be unbeaten but zoom to the moon for Joshua Sutherland will have different ideas and favourite lunchbox for Django, also a winner last time out, and also I am Kira for Hans Jones has got some pretty good looking form as well, so that could be an interesting race. But quite surprised to see that with that race being worth 600,000, there are only about eight runners. A bit of a disappointing turnout. Then the final Group 1 race of the week is over at Flemington, and it's the New Market Handicap. It's worth a cool 900,000. It's another six furlonger. It's a Grade 1 handicap this time, of course, and that makes things a little bit different, doesn't it, when it's when it's a handicap. But it's wonderful roses for Steve Rand. He's rated the highest and has got to give a good £7 to the next one down, New Tricks. And money might find that a little bit tricky. And money would probably be on New Tricks out of those two. But looking at the rest of the horses in the field, you're drawn to Ying Yang Yugis or Jing Jang Jugis or however it's supposed to be said. I don't know what really Gerard's doing to us with the names of all these horses this year. But he's definitely going to win the prize for the one who's trying to tie the commentators and people up in the most 
not with his names of his horses this season, but whatever it's called, I still think it'll probably win. So that'll be that one then. That's your final Group 1 of the day. The meeting will end with a very low rated 0 to 70 race so the uh, lesser trainer should end the day on a win there's a nice big field for that one so that'll be your day three all sorted then i'm not sure who's on the commentary box today i think it might be tim and mike and we'll all see you next week if we're all still around having survived the world cup so i'll see you next time